Hello everyone. In this video, let's get started on section 3.3 on global optimization. So we've talked about these ideas of maximum and minimums in section 3.1 and 3.2. In this section, we get deeper into these ideas talking about global optimizing. Optimization is just a general word for either maximum or minimum. So in this preliminary example, we're given a function below on the graph and we want to locate all absolute and local maximum and minimum on the interval from zero to 10. Notice we have a closed interval. So now before getting deep into this preliminary example, I just want us to think about why we might care about optimizing or finding maximum or minimums. So this type of work comes up a lot in context. For example, if you're a business person, you might be interested in maximizing your profits or minimizing your costs to create a product. Uh, if you're an engineer, maybe you want to maximize fuel efficiency in a vehicle you're designing. So there are many different places why, where we see optimizing. So that's a little bit about why we care. So let's get into how we find such optimal or maximal minimum locations. So in our preliminary example here, we have this graph. And again, we want to find the local and absolute max and min. So why don't you just pause the video and see if you can first find these local minimums and absolute minimums. All right, so as you look, you'll notice that our overall or absolute minimum occurs here. So absolute min here. And if we find our absolute max, we see it occurs all the way up here, absolute max. And then now if we look for local values, we have a local minimum here. and a local max here. So let's make a couple more observations. We see that at these values on inside the interval, we also have critical points. So that refreshes us, refreshes for us this general rule. To find the absolute max and the absolute min of a continuous function on a closed interval, that is an interval containing the endpoints, we compare the output values of the function at the critical values or points and the endpoints. So it's not enough when we're looking for an absolute or global max or min to just check these critical points. We also have to check endpoints for absolute maxes or mins. So one small note here is that this value, we don't consider this a local max. And though it is true that sort of around this point, we have a maximum of our function, but how we define local max or min is that on both sides of that point, our function needs to be smaller than the function value there. So that's just a small point, um, but wanted to address it here. All right, so this should be a good refresher of some ideas that we've already seen before. Now let's, when you're finished with this video, uh, meet me at the next one to look at the first example.